Now let's see the mode of operation for the evaluation of this connection formally. Here also we rely on the Schrodinger's equation, which is the Bible in quantum mechanics. And we propose to exactly solve the Schrodinger's equation in the case of these problems that include these classical turning points. The mode of operation is like this. We have WKB solution written for a system occupying region 1 and region 2. And that solutions will be representing the system or the object under our study in this region as well as in this region. In a mathematical approximation, we can consider these two regions are regions far away from the classical turning points. In a graphical manner, once you have an exact solution representing the system at a point extremely closer to the turning point, which will be generally a curve, then the solution representing the system in region 1 in this region may be taken as an asymptote to the curve at the classical turning point. This argument is true in the case of the WKB solution in this region 2 as well. The curve representing the WKB solution in region 2 can be very well taken as an asymptote that is a tangent at infinity for the curve or the exact solution written for the system at a point extremely closer to the turning point. So we will be making use of this mode of operation in order to identify the connection between the two possible WKB solutions representing the system in the two regions. So the operation is like this. First of all, we will have to formulate the Schrodinger's equation representing the system at a point very closer to the turning point or at the turning point. It's an approximation procedure. You cannot write it at exactly the turning point. You will be writing it at a point extremely or infinitesimally closer to the turning point. Once you have an exact solution for such a Schrodinger's equation, you can draw the asymptote at infinity in the negative infinity regime or in the positive infinity regime. That asymptote in the negative infinity regime will turn out to be the WKB work function representing the system in region 1 and we will see that it is an oscillatory solution. Whereas in region 2 this turn to be identical with the or exactly equal with the WKB work function representing the system in region 1. So we have to formulate first of all the Schrodinger's equation near the turning point. This also we have seen during the derivation of the WKB work function that is being written in terms of set phi d square phi by dx square plus p square by h cross square phi equal to 0 where p equal to root 2m into e minus v. So p equal to square root 2m into e minus v. That include this term say potential energy v. This potential v of x, an arbitrary choice of x, v as a mathematical function of an arbitrary choice of position x can be written in terms of the potential at the turning point x1, x1 is the turning point as we have taken earlier as well, in terms of a Tyler series expansion, v of x equal to v of x1 plus x minus x1 dv by dx at x1 plus x minus x1 all square over 2 factorial d square v by dx square at x1 plus etc. But we know that at the turning point, the potential energy V and the total energy E are exactly equal. So that V at X1 may be written as the total energy E itself plus x minus x1 into dv by dx at x1 will be a constant. We label it to say c. 
then p square equal to 2 mu into e minus v equal to 2 mu into e minus instead of v we substitute this one so e minus e vanishes you will have a minus c into x minus x1 that minus is taken out minus 2 mu c into x minus x1 will be an approximate value of p square of course the higher order terms are there but we assume that we are satisfied with this accuracy up to this one since x is an extremely closer point as long as x1 is concerned or x minus x1 is infinitesimally smaller then the higher order terms will have the square and cubes of x minus x1 as x minus x1 is infinitesimally smaller its cube so fourth power etc will be largely falling and we assume that those terms are of no significance as long as p square is concerned or the magnitude of p square is concerned so p square equal to minus 2 mu c into x minus x1 you substitute this value of p square in the Schrodinger's equation it get modified as d square phi by dx square minus 2 mu c by h cross square into x minus x1 phi equal to 0. Now we substitute 2 mu c by h cross square raised to 1 by 3 into x minus x1 equal to zeta so that the variable shift from x to zeta. Clearly, d theta equal to 2 mu c by h cross square raised to 1 by 3 constant. x minus x1 upon differentiation give you dx minus derivative of x1 is 0 since x1 is a constant, whereas x is arbitrary. So, d theta square we have to substitute for dx square. So, let me square it d theta square equal to 2 mu c by h cross square raised to 2 by 3 dx square. And once we shift the independent variable from x to theta, the work function phi of x transformed to psi of theta. Then d square phi by dx square may be written as d square instead of phi, I write psi of theta divided by dx square. See dx square from this equation dx square, you take this term to the left side, 2 mu c by h cross square raised to minus 2 by 3 d theta square. So dx square is substituted 2 mu c by h cross square raised to minus 2 by 3 d theta square. Minus 2 mu c by h cross square into x minus x1 uh, phi is shifted to say theta of course uh, phi, is, phi is shifted to say psi of theta of course this involved x however this is a substitution for the next step i already have say theta here so this term is retained in terms of x however this is not x term this is a zeta term that's equal to zero now we multiply the entire equation by 2 mu c by h cross square raised to minus 2 by 3 so that this denominator will be going and we will have this in the format d square psi of theta by d theta square minus is already there once this is multiplied 2 mu c by h cross square raised to 1 into 2 mu c by h cross square raised to minus 2 by 3 make it say 1 minus 2 by 3 as the power 1 minus 2 by 3 is 1 by 3 that turn out to be say a substitution for theta 2 mu c by h cross square raised to 1 by 3 into x minus x1 into psi now exactly this is theta we substitute it the Schrodinger's equation modified in terms of psi of theta as d square psi of theta by d theta square minus theta psi equal to zero. This is a special differential equation known as the airy differential equation. Airy differential equation and some of the special functions you have already discussed in the first semester of your study. However, airy didn't come in those special functions. This is a special differential equation, airy differential equation. The solution of airy differential equation are known as airy function and Berry function.
So the solution of this equation can be written in terms of airy and bary functions and these solutions are given here. Airy function is <coughs> represented as ai of theta which is given by 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity cosine of s cube by 3 plus s theta ds and the supplementary airy function or supplementary solution always referred to as the bary function b a i r y bary function given by 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus the same term with the with a negative symbol for the exponent e raised to minus s cube by 3 minus s theta plus sine of the same term s cube by 3 plus s theta ds so these are the verb functions or mathematical functions or mathematical curves representing the system at the turning point at the, this is a line say somewhere here at this turning point so at a point extremely closer to the turning point because uh, we take either the solution in region 1 or in region to the quantum mechanical region so once you are considering a point say somewhere here or say somewhere here it is exactly represented in terms of airy and bary functions of course the most general solution will be a linear combination of these two solutions but we never have an interest in this solution because it is the point at which the particle do have a momentum that vanishes and of course that point itself has no significance however the solution at this point will have some relationship with the solution at this point or say somewhere here of course for the point say somewhere here and in all these regions we have a very large probability for finding the system so we generally have greater interest in the solution in this regime Similarly, we will have interest in this regime as well, or say not here, say in this regime as well, because you cannot have a classical system occupying this region, and these particles can be found in this region as long as the problem is concerned. Then there is only one possibility for a probability for finding the particle in this region. The particle in this region might have penetrated to this region. That is purely a quantum mechanical concept with no physical counterpart as long as classical mechanics is concerned. So generally we are interested in the solutions far away from the turning point and we have generated a solution that is a solution exactly at the turning point so we'll have to cater our interest we'll have to identify the nature of the solutions in this region as well as in this region that are nothing other than the asymptotic values of the solutions already written at a point closer to the turning point as in though as you know see the solution here might be a curve something like this and the tangent of this curve at this point will be an asymptote tangent of this curve at this point will be another asymptote these asymptotic solutions are being written in terms of the wkb solutions and we are interested in the connectivity between these two asymptotic solutions for that we will be writing the asymptotic value of a re function at a point say x much much less than x1 that is exactly in the region say 1 or the classical region and of course you can write an asymptote of this curve a re function at a point x much much greater than say x1 of course there will be a connection between this asymptotic solution in this regime and the asymptotic solution of a re function in this regime the same mathematical procedure we can apply for the bary function as well these two solutions will give you then the connection and similarly for the two asymptotic solutions of the bary function also will give you them then the two uh, connection between the two solutions so 
we'll now evaluate the asymptotes of ai of theta and bi of theta this cannot the wkb approximation method can be most effectively applied in the case of those problems that include what is known as classical turning points turning points i'll tell you why these are called the turning points and what are the specifications for the importance of these turning points for that let's consider the potential to which a system having a total energy say capital e is subjected along the x axis we will be representing the position coordinate as it's a one dimensional case or generally we will be applying wkb to one dimensional cases let us mark x coordinate along the x direction or along the horizontal direction and along the vertical direction it is the energy that is being represented as you all know the total energy will be a constant so this curve representing the total energy will be a line parallel to the x axis and let the potential energy have a variation like this potential energy v of x is assumed to have a variation like this now this point at which the total energy meet the potential energy will be splitting the entire range of x coordinates to which the system is subjected for performing a dynamics into two different regions this region let me mark it say region 1 and in this region the total energy possessed by the system exceed the potential energy e is greater than v of x and the other region for convenience it is being marked as say region 2 is having this quality here the total energy is less than the potential energy e less than v of x of course this region will be a classical region you can have plenty of particles occupying this region or most often particles about which we will be talking in quantum dynamics or in generally in dynamics will be having this characterization their total energy will be generally exceeding the potential energy if the total energy exceed the potential energy then the momentum p that is given by as we have seen earlier is p equal to square root of 2m into e minus v in this region 1 e minus v is positive so that the momentum will be real whereas in region 2 e minus v will be negative since e is less than v so that the momentum will be imaginary and you cannot have generally particle occupying this region for we use it to say that no classical particle will be occupying this region because this is a contradiction as long as classical system is concerned however often we will have quantum mechanical system having this qualities even if the total energy is less than the potential energy there is a chance or there is a probability for finding particles in this region as well generally we mathematically represent this as a quality of the quantum mechanical work function now consider this point say let us mark it x1 at this point the total energy curve meet with the potential energy so that e minus v will be equal to 0 since e is exactly equal to v so at this point the momentum possessed by the object also will be equal to zero though the momentum is zero the rate of change of momentum with respect to position say dp by dx is not equal to zero dp by dx will have a definite value that is why you can have the system being found in the region 2 as well and from the curve itself dp by dx is different from zero this kind of points encountered by systems at which the total energy become equal to potential energy so that momentum vanishes though rate of change of momentum with respect to position 
do not vanish are referred to as the turning points as this is a uh, quality or a property possessed by classical system generally these are referred to as the classical turning points and we will be talking about a system that include both these regions say one and two or a quantum mechanical system that is subjected to perform a dynamics in situations involving both regions 1 and 2 and the WKB approximation method can be most effectively applied in the case of this kind of problems involving classical turning points and this include some physical situations like a system subjected to a potential at this point here the potential is say maybe zero it can have a total energy the object is executing a dynamics in this region there is a probability for finding some of the particles or object in this region as well though its total energy is less than the potential energy then how come this particle enter into this region we use it to say that it's a quality of the quantum mechanical wave function always it penetrates through the barrier if the barrier having a finite thickness only then the, there is there exists a probability for finding the particle on the other side of the barrier as well under such a situation also this happens to be a turning point now the case turn or uh, modified or getting modified to be the case of penetration of particles through barriers or that is generally referred to as the quantum mechanical penetration or particle penetration or the quantum tunneling effect so all these cases and some other physical situations like alpha particle decay, uh, working of a tunnel diode etc can also be taken as some of the examples of this kind of problems where we can effectively apply WKB method. In such situations we assume that the WKB approximation method is valid in both region 1 and in region 2 in the sense that the criteria for the validity of WKB approximation is true in the case of particles occupying region 1 or particles occupying region 2 that indicate that the system can be represented by a general WKB wave function written in region 1 and another general WKB wave function written in region 2. We have already seen how to write the WKB wave function in terms of the momentum possessed by the system at that particular region. However, we have already seen that the WKB wave function in classical region will be different from that in quantum mechanical region. I have just mentioned towards the end of the discussion of the WKB wave function that if the region has a total energy exceeding potential energy then the momentum will be real and the WKB wave function will be oscillatory. On the other hand if the momentum is imaginary corresponding to a total energy less than the potential energy then the wave function will be exponential. So, strictly speaking, in region 1, the wave function will be oscillatory since this is purely a classical region or since it is a region where the total energy exceeds the potential energy and the momentum is real. Whereas in region 2, where the potential energy exceeds the total energy, the region is, we use it to say that it is purely a quantum mechanical region because you no know, classical system will be occupying this kind of a region. The momentum will be then imaginary, making the overall WKB wave function here already you have an imaginary square root of unity. Momentum also will be giving another I value, I square will make it say minus 1 and here this term to be say plus 1. So the overall WKB wave function written for the particle occupying region 2 will be a sum of a increasing exponential term 
and a decreasing exponential term this term to be a decreasing exponential term and this term to be an increasing exponential term and in region 1 the oscillatory solution can be represented either in terms of a cosine wave function or in terms of a sine wave function then of course we will be interested in identifying how these wave functions in the two regions are connected that is the wkb wave function that you write for the particle occupying region 1 is related to the wkb wave function that we write for the particle occupying region 2 are related to each other or more strictly in region 1 the solution is oscillatory then how the oscillatory solution that we write for region 1 will be connected will be related with the exponential solution that we write for the particle occupying region 2 are related or in a more convenient manner we will state that the oscillatory solution can have a cosine part as well as a sine part how the cosine part will be related with it. the exponential solution can be an exponential decay or an exponential growth so the exponential solution can be either an exponential decay or an exponential growth and the oscillatory solution can be either a sinusoidal wave function or a sinusoidal wave function how these cosinusoidal or sinusoidal wave function representing the system in classical region is related with the exponential decay or exponential growing exponentially growing solution written for the system occupying region 2 are related to each other it is exactly that we are interested in solving of course you can easily write the wave function representing the system in region 1 by taking an arbitrary choice of x value in this regime and starting from the turning point at x1 using the general wkb wave function that is given by y1 equal to a1 by root p a raised to i by h cross integral x1 to x look at this integration limits we will be integrating this from x1 to x here x1 is exceeding x as long as region 1 is concerned so that integral x1 to x turn out to be a negative integral or once you apply the limit it it, it might give you a negative implication as long as the limit of integration is concerned plus b1 by root b e raised to minus i by h cross integral x1 to x pd x prime that will be the wkb solution which we could write as long as the system occupying region 1 is concerned here keep in mind that the momentum is a real parameter as momentum is given by root 2m into e minus b since e minus b is positive momentum is real however for region 2 the wkb wave function is written as a2 by root p e raised to of course i by h cross is there however in region 2 the momentum is imaginary since we have momentum p equal to root 2m into e minus b e minus v is negative so to make it e minus b magnitude i might take a minus sign outside so that i can have a square root minus one as an additional factor coming from this momentum term square root minus one we write it say i and this part will be then the modulus of momentum so we substitute here say p equal to i into p as long as region 2 is concerned then i into this additional i will make it say i square minus 1 that minus 1 is written here minus 1 by h cross integral x1 to x pd x prime here also you must keep in mind x1 is a point here and for region 2 x is an arbitrary choice of point in region 2 exclusively clearly x is greater than x1 so that x1 to x turn out to be a positive limit as long as the limit of integration is concerned plus b2 by root p this term for region 2 turn out to be you have minus i i coming 
from this momentum term making it say minus i square minus i square is plus 1 so this turn to be say 1 by h cross integral x1 to x pd x prime this also illustrate that the WKB work function in region 1 is uh, oscillatory. You can have a Demovius expansion for this. Thus we have found the solutions of a differential equation as a of theta and b of theta. But we are interested in the asymptotic values of these solutions. The asymptotic values, asympto has you know the definition is the tangent of the curve at infinity so we can find the asymptotic values of a of theta and b of theta by following the procedure of finding the tangent of a curve at infinity which you have done during your degree classes I'll give you the asymptotic values only. I'm not going to show the derivation. You can follow the same procedure for finding the tangent of a curve at infinity to find the asymptotic values of a of theta and b a of theta on both regimes. Uh, this I suppose you may take as an assignment. For the time being, I'm not going to show the derivation here. The asymptotic value of a of theta in the limit theta tends to zero theta much much less than zero. Theta as we know is to mu c by h cross raised to 1 by 3 into x minus x1. When theta is much much less than zero, x minus x1 is in fact much much less than zero. x minus x1 is much much less than zero or is negative. That means x is smaller than x1 that is possible if and only if the region uh, represented by these arbitrary choices of x is behind the turning point say x1 that is exactly the region 1 so the uh, asymptotic value of a i of zeta in region 1 that must turn to the oscillatory solution represented by WKB. So this is identical with the WKB oscillatory solution. And the value of this asymptote is found to be alpha by root p sine of 1 by h cross integral x to x1 pd x prime plus pi by 4. Here the integration is from x to x1 that is a positive limit as x is behind say x1. In all these we will be representing positive limits only though we have taken some negative limits in the limits earlier. So this is the asymptotic value of a i of theta in region 1. Similarly in region 2 asymptotic value of a of theta that must turn out to be the oscillator exponential WKB solution in region 2 theta is much much greater than 0 that means x much much greater than x1 so x arbitrary choice of x is say somewhere on the right side of x1 the turning point that is a solution corresponding to region 2 and the value of this asymptote is found to be alpha by 2 root p e raised to minus 1 by h cross integral x1 to x pd x prime here also x1 to x is a positive limit because we have region 2 x1 is behind x so these are the asymptotic values of a of theta on the two regions that represent the values of the curve values of the same curve at two extremities definitely they are related to each other then this relationship is in region 1 that is classical region the verb function that is represented by a sinusoidal oscillation is modified to a decreasing exponential term in the quantum mechanical region <coughs> or in region 2 with the constant multiplying the sine function in the oscillatory region becoming halved becoming half of the coefficient of the decreasing exponential term Similarly, the asymptotic values of Berry function are given here. BA of theta in the limit theta much much less than 0, that is region 1. 
that should be complementary with the WKB oscillatory solution in region 1 and this value of asymptote is found to be alpha by root p cosine of 1 by h cross integral x to x1 p dx prime plus pi by 4. This is again positive. Here also this is positive. Similarly, the value of Mary function in the regime theta much much greater than 0 that should turn to be identical with the WKB exponential wave function in region 2 in the limit x much much greater than 0 is found to be alpha by root p e raised to 1 by h cross integral x1 to xpd x5. These are the two extreme values of one and the same curve. So they are identically related to each other. This gives us the second connection between the two WKB verb functions. The WKB verb function represented by a cosinusoidal oscillation in the classical region becomes an increasing exponential term with the constant multiplying the increasing exponential exactly the same as that of the constant multiplying the cosinusoidal oscillation. Uh, in these expressions, alpha is a constant given by 2 mu c h cross by pi cube raised to 1 by 6. So, the asymptotic values of the two solutions give exactly the connection between the possible WKB solutions in the classical and quantum mechanical or rather than quantum mechanical I must tell you non-classical regions and these are summarized for convenience like this in classical region the solution is oscillatory and the solution can be represented either by a sinusoidal oscillation or using a cosinusoidal oscillation in the non-classical region the solution is exponential and this exponential solution can be an exponential decay or an exponential growth. How these oscillatory uh, counterparts of solutions are related with the exponential counterparts of solution? That is exactly what is known as connection formula. This connection is like this. The oscillatory solution represented by a sine wave function becomes a decreasing exponential term in the non-classical region with the constant multiplying the decreasing exponential getting halved comparing with the constant multiplying the sinusoidal oscillation in region 1. That is the first connection formula. Now the second connection formula. This is the first one sinusoidal oscillation get modified or sinusoidal wave function get modified as decreasing exponential and keep in mind that in this uh, oscillatory part there is an additional pi by 4 parameter that will be missing in the exponential term. The second connection formula is or can be stated as a the WKB wave function represented by a cosinusoidal oscillation in the classical region get transformed to an increasing exponential wave function in the non-classical region. With the constant multiplying the increasing exponential exactly the same as the constant multiplying the cosinusoidal oscillatory solution. So this is the connection formula. Keep this in mind. There are two points to be kept. Work function represented by sinusoidal oscillation in the classical region becomes decreasing exponential, decreasing exponential solution in the non-classical region. With the constant multiplying the decreasing exponential just a half of the constant multiplying the sinusoidal oscillation. The work function represented by a cosine function in the classical region is modified as an increasing exponential work function in the non-classical region with 
the constant multiplying the cosine wave function and the increasing exponential term being exactly equal. So these are the core points that are to be kept in mind as long as the connection formula is concerned. We will be making use of this formula for a few more derivations that are yet to come while we talk about the applications of WKB method within the limit of the demand of our syllabus. However, the overall WKB solution in region 1, I have written it in terms of an exponential uh, parameter with coefficient being i. I didn't represent this in this particular format. So this is to be represented for uh, a comparison. Overall WKB work function in region 1 is a1 by root p raised to i by h cross integral x1 to x p d x prime plus b1 by root p raised to minus i by h cross integral x1 to x p d x prime. That I will have to represent in this particular format. This exponent with the i parameter needed to be written in terms of the sine and cosine terms that we will do in the next. For that, we make use of the Demovius expansion e raised to i theta equal to cos theta plus i sin theta, where theta being uh, say 1 by h cross integral x1 to x p d x prime. So a1 by root p e raised to minus i by h cross integral x to x1 p d x prime. I will be multiplying and dividing this term by e raised to i pi by 4. e raised to minus i pi by 4 is given here. e raised to i pi by 4 is also given here. And this is done for the second term as well. b1 by root p e raised to i by h cross integral x to x1 p d x pi e raised to i pi by 4 e raised to minus i pi by 4. This is the WKB verb function that we have taken which generally we write from x to x1 where x1 is the turning point as long as region 1 is concerned x to x1 is positive. It is in that positive manner we have written the asymptotic values of airy and vary functions as well. Now club these terms having this negative power a1 by root p e raised to minus uh, i is taken as a common term i into 1 by h cross integral x to x1 p d x prime plus pi by 4 e raised to i pi by 4 plus b1 by root p e raised to i into 1 by h cross integral uh, x to x1 p d x prime plus pi by 4 into e raised to minus i pi by 4. For the sake of convenience, let me label this quantity say theta here also as well as here. Then this is a1 by root p e raised to minus i theta e raised to i pi by 4 plus b1 by root p e raised to i theta e raised to minus i pi by 4. Now we substitute this Demovius expansion cos theta plus i sin theta. Here this is e raised to minus i, th I, minus I theta that is cos theta minus i sin theta. Here it is substituted cos theta plus i sin theta. Now there are two terms containing sin and two terms containing cosine. Club them. Uh, sin is taken out. Here what remains is minus i a1 e raised to i pi by 4 and in this term once sin theta is taken out what remains is i b1 e raised to minus i pi by 4 divided by root p into sin theta. Similarly cosine term is taken out what remains here is a1 e raised to i pi by 4 by root p root p is a common denominator plus b1 e raised to minus i pi by 4. That is minus i a1 plus i b1 into e raised to minus i pi by 2. I have taken e raised to i pi by 4 outside by root p sin theta. And from this term e raised to minus i pi by 4 is taken outside. So that a1 will have a coefficient e raised to i pi by 2. That is minus i a1 plus b1 i into e raised to minus i pi by 2 is cos pi by 2 minus i sin pi by 2. Cos y by 2 is 0. Minus i sin pi by 2 is 1. So here we will have minus i. And this term becomes a1 e raised to i pi by 2 is cos pi by 2 plus i sin pi by 2. That is i plus b1 e raised to minus i pi by 4 by root p cos theta. 
Now this is rearranged as minus i a1 plus b1 i into minus i minus i square that is plus 1 e raised to i pi by 4 by root p sin of theta is exactly this quantity 1 by h cross integral x to x1 p dx prime plus pi by 4 that is written here. Here also for cosine that is retained. Uh, this is another constant minus i a1 plus b1 into e raised to i pi by 4 may be taken as a constant.